me today my daily bread. Help me to walk alone ahead. Though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no love. Oh, my smile, my mind reassure me I don't need no one. Woke up this morning with my mind set on loving me. With my mind set on loving me. Good evening and welcome to the Tap In Series section. Brought to you by BH Brilliant Minds Project Inc. I am your host for this evening, Miss Barbara Howard. We will be talking with educators, life coaches, financial advisors, psychologists, community healers, community help providers, community warriors, and artists. To get insight to how we should heal ourselves and our families as we move in real time dealing with traumatized hearts, minds, and spirit because of COVID-19, stress, current government situations, and etc. We would like at one point to ask our facilitator, what are the best practices and creative practices we should be promoting as we move in these unprecedented times that we're living in? Our love language for the Tap In series is creating a platform to highlight and uplift people of color, brilliance, vibrant spirit, resilience, boldness, and our gift to last and love. This evening, I will have Miss Brenda Hamilton. She will come to you, but before we get started, I would like to have Miss Samantha do a poem for us. She's a sp spoken word artist, and I am grateful and thankful that she's here and she is my assistant. I love her dearly, and I appreciate everything that she does. So I hope that what she will say to you today and to us today will bless us because we are, we are women warriors with fighting spirits. Go ahead, Samantha. Oh, peace. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome into this space, into this evening. And Brenda, we're so excited about you being our featured guest speaker this evening. The poem I'll share is one that I've been working on um, on a series as a part of called I Used to Love Him. And, but the hymn is H-Y-M and like hymnals mm -hmm. and thinking about the old spirituals that keep us going in really rough times or just like the gospel song, so to speak. So a part of it is a song and I will admit I'm not a singer, but there'll be this moment there, these moments, I'm not sure if everybody has ever experienced, you could not if, if that has been your experience where you're not a singer, but there are moments you'll break out into praise because you recognize <laughs> there's something else in the atmosphere happening. Um, so I, I pray that this poem encourages you. It starts off with the song. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My mother prayed for me, had me on her mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. In the words of Jesus to Simon Peter, I have prayed for you so, you're, so that your faith may not fail. 
derail, go downhill as to pose as opposed to way up yonder. I have prayed for you the type of prayer that still lingers on the lips of your buried grandmothers. I have prayed for you these prayers, often disguised as misery, often disguised as why me, often disguised as backward blessings. Like I didn't mean to go that way, but I needed to go the way to truly understand the depth of his covering, that godly sorrow brings repentance and not shame to those stumbling. You see, I found this scripture amidst a twister that declared the leading to salvation with the absence of regret. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse 10, check the text. Check your heart and every voice that screams, you are not worthy. That you showed up before his throne too late and his forgiveness couldn't be given out so early. Please hear me when I say life is a simple learning that is not just about reading or existing but actually applying it to our journeys let's pray for each other let's read with each other let's be the books that we need let's be our stories let's be living examples of what we need every word every page matters you matter now thank you Thank you, Samantha. And I just want to also add that if you are participating in this Zoom or dial in or any social media, you are giving BH Brilliant Minds the authorization to record you, your voice, your picture, and your comments. This information series will be uploaded to our website, www bhbrilliantminds.com. And once again, we thank you for being here. This is an honor and celebrating the fighting spirit of the women warrior. And we have a woman warrior that is on this line that's going to share her testimony with us today and best practices that we can use in the midst of this COVID-19. But we won't make others sick and we won't make ourselves sick but most important, it's about healing one another. And we're grateful and thankful to have her today. Miss Brenda Hamilton, we give it over to you. And thank you for being here. Well, thank you for the opportunity um, to come into this space. I hope that I can share something that would be of benefit to some of your listeners. Um, I Maybe before you finish, Mm -hmm. What I can say, I think we still hear, we do hear your fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do hear the fan. So, so, so girl, look, get you one of these. Get you, get, there we go. We go old school, girl. Just go old school. You, you know how we do. <laughs> go ahead. Or if it's not you, it's somebody. I hear some screeching in the background. Not quite sure who's not on mute. Okay. Hopefully everybody has that opportunity. Um, but um, again, so I was saying thank you for creating the space and um, welcoming me into it. Um, so for the most part, um, I'll just introduce myself again. My name is Brenda Hamilton, and I am, I consider myself not only a survivor, but a thriver. And um, I'm just trying to do everything I can, like everyone else, to keep moving forward. Um, a little bit about my history. Um, in my uh, 20s, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's and that treatment consisted of um, radiation, chemotherapy, and radiation. And then later on in my 40s, uh, was uh, because of some of the long-term side effects from that uh, treatment, I was diagnosed with a, a heart condition called cardiomyopathy. And I'll double back to that later on. Um, and then again, later, much later in my 40s, I was um, diagnosed with breast Um, and because I had so much radiation um, done to my body, 
uh, prior in the first diagnosis, uh, radiation treatment and certain things were not an option for me. So um, I had to go back to having that. Before yeah. you keep going, I'm not quite sure because I want to make sure that everybody get an opportunity to hear you and hear you clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if it's, are you on an earpiece or are you, no. Okay. Can you me? I can hear you and I can see you. Um, okay. Not quite sure who's that. Is. Okay, go right ahead. We're going to push through. You know what? Do, do us this huge favor. Make sure your mic is turned all the way up where we can hear you a little better, too. Okay. So um, I'll just do my, because I'm not, it sounds loud to me, but I'll work on projecting my voice. Is that better? Okay. Can you hear me better? Yes. Yeah? How about everybody okay. else? Can you hear her clearly? Can I get a thumbs up or something? She gave some thumbs up. Go ahead. Thank you. And okay. thank you all for your patience. Because okay. I can't see, I really don't see. Um, so, um, um, I was saying, so then I ended up with a double mastectomy. Um, and then, um, so there's quite a few different tumultuous turns and ups and downs I've had in my health life. Um, so I would imagine, you know, we all have ups and downs in our life, whether it's our health or something else, but that's where I'll put our focus tonight, um, mainly on breast cancer and just health in general. By no means am I medically qualified to uh, say anything other than what my own personal experiences have been. So let's be clear about that. Um, so um, as I said, I would double back to the, the heart issue. So when I had radiation the first time, it was straight on um, to, and so my organs were damaged. My heart was damaged. And uh, because of that, something that developed from there, which was unbeknownst to me at the time, was something called, um, you may be hearing about it a little bit more now in the news, but it's called myocarditis. Thesis, I believe is how you pronounce it. And so what that does is because of the radiation and or any viral infection, the regular flu, this COVID virus, any type of virus that gets into your body can cause this heart disorder. So if you're paying attention to the news and you're looking at professional athletes, if they've been diagnosed or student collegiate athletes, none, it doesn't matter, anyone. They've been diagnosed with COVID, they go through that and then they are COVID free. But what you'll notice is that they then have to go through a cardio uh, workup. So they have to be with a cardiologist and the cardiologist will determine if those athletes can continue to be a professional athlete or collegiate athlete. And that's because fluid will build up around the heart when you have an infection. That's for all of us. So the way, I mean, with my issue, I, of course, during my lifetime, I've had the flu. We've all had the flu, a common flu. So, and then mine being exasperated with the chemo and with the radiation caused me to go from one prognosis and it progressed. And some people, it will reverse itself. And some people, it won't affect, obviously, because we're all so different. But for me, it progressed and it led to a disease called cardiomyopathy. And just with that alone, now knowing I have to deal with that, you can treat it with medication sometimes. It works, sometimes it doesn't. So for me, in my case, I ended up just last month on the 25th getting a device put in. It's called, uh, um, so I still have my sutures that I'm still healing from. 
Um, but this device, it's um, called the CRT, and that's for cardiac resynchronization therapy defibrillator. So I just want to encourage everyone to take not only COVID, but the flu season in general very seriously and to mask up because you always, you know, we always take things for granted. We're, that's our human nature. Oh, it's just a cold, I'll get over it. But oftentimes we don't realize that we may have an underlying condition. You know, um, sometimes you could be just, oh, I'm so out of breath, oh, because I'm out of shape. But it could be because you had a little fluid building up around your heart and that's not something you would think about. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage people, like I always try to do, is make sure you get your yearly physical. Make sure you are in tune with your body. Obviously, your story is not my story, but we all have a story. So if you're not connected with your body and knowing yourself personally, I really encourage you to do that. And I really encourage you to wear a mask when you're out, if you believe in COVID or not, not my, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you believe that you can catch a cold that can turn into the flu, wear a mask. If you believe that, you know, um, I just really want to encourage you. And even if you don't believe that, right? I'm asking and encouraging you to, to protect someone like me that has underlying conditions that I'm aware of. There's other people, again, who have conditions and they may not be aware of it. That's when they go to the doctor and then we get that surprise of, you know, something that's been brewing that we didn't show any symptoms of because I didn't show any symptoms. I didn't show any symptoms of heart disease. I didn't have swelling. You know, I didn't have shortness of breath the way some other people have. And so years went by and I, I had no no clue. So that's a little bit in a nutshell about um, my experiences um, in the health world. Um, it's, it's an ongoing um, event for me just this year alone. I've had three major surgeries um, and I keep, I look back and I just go, okay, he brought me. And like you said in your prayer, Samantha, that uh, your, your poem, excuse me, that I have a praying mother, you know, I have a praying father, I have prayer warriors, I have sisters and family members and kids and, you know, believing in the power of prayer. And, and each time I look back on something as we all can do and look back and say, I went through that, but now I'm here today and I'm moving forward. So whatever it is, it's not too big for God. So I just try and always keep that at the forefront. And um, my youngest on my mirror in the bathroom, I see it every day. And, you know, we go through things and we try and figure, you know, why me? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? Is God mad at me or is the universe? Well, however, whatever context you put it in. But now when I go into my room every day and I look on that mirror and no matter what it is, it says, try me. So I don't say why me, it's strictly try me. And when I keep that mindset, that's what helps continue to move forward. So um, I'm just gonna keep at it and keep going no matter what comes. And so I would encourage all of you to continue to do the same. So um, with that said, um, I am with um, an organization um, called Impact One, it's a foundation. And this foundation was started in uh, 2015 by a good friend of mine now, her name is Elizabeth Clough. And um, she has a very unique story. Um, when she was 37 years old with little ones, she was diagnosed with um, breast cancer. And um, her community came together like so many of ours do to support her and she received a tremendous amount of support and it made her start thinking, what about all the people who don't have that support? How do we get to 
through. And so with that, she began the process of putting Impact One together. And so the basis of Impact One is, oh, yeah. it is um, to meet women where they are in their journey of breast cancer. Um, and by doing so, we're going to eliminate the costly products. Out here, I have some of these products that we, we can send out in a customized box to any person that goes on our website. And um, when you go on the website, yes, there's education yeah. on there. And the application will ask you for you know, what you're in need of. And well, some people don't know what they're in need yeah. of. And so we can offer assistance with them in that regard. So one of the things that women do. It was today, but. Um, they might a prosthetic because they've had a mastectomy. So of a prosthetic. And so they come in different shapes because we are different shapes. And sometimes we're able to get them um, in different colors. So I want to show you an example of one of the products that is available through Impact One. So what I have here is a mastectomy bra. And so hopefully on the inside, you can see there's this little pocket. So this prosthetic goes right inside the pocket. And so we don't have to, if you think back on the on the time when you were in middle school, some of some of the ladies out there used to stuff your bra and you had to adjust it because you didn't quite. So this this is kind of the equivalent of that. And so if you can see, it fits right in there and holds like that. And so, and then there's another style um, of prosthetic and it, it, hopefully you can see this pretty good. You can see the detail that I didn't show you on the other one. There's even like a little impression of a, a nipple on there just to make it as real life as possible. Um, so, and again, these just fit right into the bra to um, give yourself that balance for, to some women, when you have a mastectomy, you're not able, and then of course it just goes right up to you as normal. Some women are not able to have a mastectomy for medical reasons um, that they just can't have it. Their skin can't take it or um, whatever the reason is, but sometimes there are women, and then there's just some women that choose just not to have it. So they rather have these instead. instead. So um, those are just some of an example of items that are available. So the bras are available, the mastectomy bras, the prosthetics are available. Um, we also have um, what we call, these are also a different type of prosthetic. These are a lot lighter, they're lightweight, um, because when you first have a mastectomy, you don't want the heaviness, you can't have the heaviness of this on you. So you need something lighter. Um, we also have these camisoles that are available. This is, I'm gonna hold it up and cover myself because it's a little long and I'm gonna open it up. It's Velcro down the front, but when you have a surgery, you also have drain tubes that are coming out. And so they have a pocket inside to hold the drain tubes and also to hold your softies as we call them to also still give you the balance um, that's needed once you have surgery. So there's quite a few items that, you know, come into play. So when you see someone and you're like, or she says, I have breast cancer. To me, um, breast cancer or any cancer, it, it, it's like layers because it's, there's, once you start pulling back, like, what does that really mean for that person when you see someone or, you know, that has cancer or is going through treatment? There's so much that's involved that we generally don't think about. You usually think about, oh, they have cancer. So 
oh, they lost their hair. So we also supply wigs, um, but there's, like I said, these other things available as well. And then we have what, this is called a compression garment. I'm gonna go old school on some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but back in the day, when you had a baby and they would bind you to pull you together and hold you in place. So this is what that does for you when you have a mastectomy. You need to be held in place. Okay, thank you, thank you. That's what that offers. Um, the other thing we also offer um, is something, it's called a sleeve. And we offer this because um, Sometimes fluids get trapped. And for the life of me right now, my mind is going blank, but there's um, a lumpectomy, uh, not lumpectomy, oh my goodness, I cannot think of the um, diagnosis for this, but the, your fluids get trapped. And so this is a compression sleeve for your arm to try and help that fluid move out of there. And so therapy is necessary to help you, especially if you've had lymph nodes removed. Um, and so we do have some of these available as well. And so these items um, are packaged up and they're wrapped up in this beautiful, what we call our whole box. And we do our best to match what that person is in need of right they are in their journey. And we serve all women that have had any type of treatment or surgeries related to the breast. And we can serve you whether you have insurance, you uh, don't have insurance, you're underinsured, we can serve you because the bottom line is, as you said, as women warriors, we have to stick together. We have to advocate for ourselves and for each other so that we can get the products necessary and needed in order to pull ourselves back together to be whole. Because you want to get back to your normal or your new normal, whatever that's going to be. And that's what we strive to do at Impact One. So if you or someone you know has been diagnosed recently or in the past that might be in need of items, we have an application process online. Send them to our website. It's www.impactone.pink. We're also on all the social medias and YouTube. Um, so I would encourage you to encourage them to go and take a look at our website and um, see what we have been up to. Um, again, Impact One has there are four of us on the board. Elizabeth is the founder, along with myself and Norma and Charlene. And we all bring a different and unique story with our personal experiences so that when we talk and engage with those that are seeking help from us, we know what we've been through. We know what they've been through. We also have a team of some wonderful ambassadors that are there to help support us. Um, we're just doing what we can to serve the masses of women that are in need um, the best we can. And especially now doing, during COVID, I would really encourage you, if it's time for your mammogram, not to put it off. I understand about what's happening, but we have been nonstop. And even though I've had my surgeries, we're still going. Even though Elizabeth has had her challenges, and by the way, she her cancer was in remission, and about two years ago, it resurfaced. And so she's taking her treatments, but Impact One has never stopped serving women. Pandemic cancer does not care, <laughs> as, yeah. as you know. And women are losing their insurance and because they're losing their jobs. And, you know, we as women, we know our hair is our crown jewel. And that doesn't make you vain. It doesn't make you self-centered. 
It makes you that you are on a journey and you're fighting for your life and you just want to keep yourself held together. And if it means that you can find some place that can get you a wig, then come find us. Do whatever it takes because, you know, we can walk alongside someone, but we don't know what's really going on in that mindset, you know? And we all deal with things differently, whatever we're going through. So if we can find a wig or a bra or something that will offset that cost or that will make me feel a little bit of normalcy, then that's what we want to do. And that's what this is all about. Like I said, wholeness so that we can continue the fight that we're already in um, to get through this thing. Um, so um, keep impact one in mind. Please go to our website, take a look. Um, I have a lot of, you know, I want to be cognizant of time, but there's, you know, if someone has a question for me, you can jump right in. But um, while we're talking about breast cancer, I always like to remind us all that men get breast cancer too. So probably you guys, the most notable person you might come to mind is Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, an example. Um, there are so many men. There's one, I believe I read one out of every 100 men get breast cancer. So I have this, this is um, an older article of Essence, but I saved this because I know you can't, probably really can't see it, but this is an article about a man who had breast cancer at the same time as his daughter. He actually was first diagnosed because his mom had ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And so he had a lump, but you know, as we do, oh, it's just a lump, and especially guys, he just, eh, whatever. But it started to get bigger. And so his wife and his daughter encouraged him to go to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, it's just fatty tissue, but it continued to grow. And so by the time they really caught it, you know, it had advanced. So he had to go through the same ordeals, a, a mammogram, just like we do. Men have to go through the same process so that they can see it. They can put the markers, these little titanium markers that they insert around the tumor um, and so that they know where that section is. And so, you know, it's just a fascinating to me read about this man and then he encouraged his daughter of course and his wife to get their mammograms and then upon his daughter getting hers is when they discovered that she had breast cancer so i never want to discount the fact that men also get breast cancer and that men should be proactive as well in their health especially um like in his case his mom had it but I'll just say, just for reference, in my case, I don't have a family history. So don't let that be the reason that you don't do your monthly self-checks or that you don't stay in tune with your uh, yearly physicals and making sure that you're on top of your, your game and knowing your body. So um, that those are some of the things that I wanted to share. And also, of course, I have to do my plug. Here's our little mask. And you can see that we have those available on our website. Um, because we are a community organization, we usually get out and have social events and do fundraisers. Um, each time someone makes a purchase off our website, $5 goes back to us. So. Um, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and allowing me to kind of shed a little bit of light on things um, that uh, I have experienced and that uh, the, by either my personal self or through the life of meeting someone else through this uh, Hope Box program that we have through Impact One. So it's, um, I'm just really, really humble to be able to serve other people and know that I am making a difference and um, I just
really appreciate the time and the opportunity that you gave me in this space today. So thank you very much. Well, Brent, you are so very, very welcome. And every last woman on this um, call is a woman warrior. And there's so many things Barb, that your we- your camera's not on. There's so many things that we have gone through and are going through in our lives that allows us to continue just to keep moving. We got that fighting spirit. And I tell you, sister, that that spidey, fighting spirit in you come from our lineage all the way back from our ancestors and we are standing on the shoulders and the backs of women that are fighters that are warriors and that tell us today that we've been there too we understand so as you were saying your messages in our messages in our stories is to encourage somebody else i don't know what you're you may be going through i don't know what you are pushing through because you're pushing, you are not, you're not going to stay still. As we were, as the poem said earlier about someone praying for you, we pray for everybody in this world because we all have a story. We should be praying for the world in general. And you don't know that prayer that you pray out for somebody else will give them that fighting warrior woman spirit inside of them. So, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, what is some best practices that you do for self-care during these times and doing your, uh, um, your travels and, and your journey? Um, for me, um, my diet, I've had, to, I mean, you know, that's, that's going to be the first thing because, you know, that, that, that's just inevitable. Um, so for me, because I have so many different with the heart thing, you know, you got to, so, and that's what I say, I didn't show signs because, you know, sometimes people have okay, Stop right here. Slow down. Stop. Don't stop. Walk trees or things of that nature. So I had to make sure that, which I didn't have. And so I think that was uh, very instrumental for, for me in, in that sense that I didn't have to get any scents put in and things of that nature because I decided I have to increase my vegetables. I had to stop drinking soda. I have to pay attention to how much sugar I take in because cancer loves sugar, you know? And so do I cut everything out? Absolutely not. I just, I'm just not that good yet. But so I, I'm aware of it and I kind of play the food game with myself. So if I say in the morning, if I'm going to have, um, some, let's just say for breakfast, if I have a sausage patty in the morning, I don't know, um, then I'm not going to have meat later in the day for lunch because I had a sausage patty or maybe I'll have meat just at dinner. So for me, I just kind of play a food game. I just make it a game in my mind. And then of course, like anything else that start practicing, it eventually becomes your habit. So um, that was my main thing is, is um, just really paying attention to what I eat. Now, am I actively going to the gym? No. <laughs> but am I active? Yes. So you can be active if it's, you know, vacuuming the floor or mopping the floor or doing a project in the house. It doesn't mean that, you know, you got to get to the gym or out, not to the gym these days, but that you have to necessarily grind it out. If that's your thing, then by all means. But for me, you're saying, um, I, I just try my best to stay active um, if I'm not recovering. And even if I am recovering, actually I do get up and I tell myself because I can't just lay here because obviously, you know, yeah. just lay in bed, you, you, you have issues from that. But um, that's really what I just try and do. And I don't smoke, I, you know, it's, it's just your standard, you know, what you always hear, eat right, drink a lot of water, don't drink, don't smoke, just, you know, and all those types of things. Um, but I mean, and if you do, you know, you just have to realize that you need to, we have to, as we continue in the journey of life, we have to really pay attention to our moderation. If whatever you indulge in, you just have to look at your moderation um, and try and spread it out the best the best you can. And um, just 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 be conscious of you know their their side effects. Oh, excuse me, I 
This is for lymphedema. I could not, my mind went bright blank, but there's, it's called lymphedema when the fluid builds up in your arm when you've had lymph nodes removed. And if you have had lymph nodes removed under your arm, let me just say this while my mind is on that. You need to make sure you know what side you've had on because if you go to get your lab work done, you can't just throw any arm out there. You need to make sure you tell them you have lymphedema because that matters where they draw the blood from your arm. So sorry about that, but that's how my no, mind. Oh, thank you. So, thank you. Thank but, you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. And, and you know, look, it happens to all of us. It's like, a, what was I saying? What was I thinking? Okay, all right, give me a minute. But um, right. <laughs> that's just a part of life. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to understand that. Now right. I understand what the mamas and grandmas were saying, but yeah. now I get it. But yeah. is there anybody on the call Oh, there's a hand, Miss K.P. Perry. Come on in. How you doing today, sister? And thank you for being here, woman warrior. Thank you so much. And Brenda, thank you so much. Brenda happens to be my neighbor. Uh, Brenda, one question I have for you, um, and the reason why I ask this question is because my mom died of metastatic uh, breast cancer, and uh, several of her step aunts died of metastatic breast cancer, and it actually skipped a, a generation and the thing is my 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 step her her step uh, um aunt didn't look like her they were scott irish oh, and they looked wow. like white women okay wow. and so my question is how do we as african americans um who look the way we do today advocate for ourselves when we go to see our doctors who, you know, we're not fitting into that box that they see us fitting into. And how do we get the tests that we know we need when we think that there's something wrong? So, hi, and good to see you. Um, um, first of all, we know that disparity is real, right? Um, in every category that you can mention. So for me, what I've learned because I've gone through so much is that it is so crucial for us to I can say that it's extremely Brian, say that again. Hear those words. I'm say sorry. it again. Say it again for us because it, it got stuck, but it's okay. Oh, okay. So what I was saying is to we know that disparity exists. And so what we have to do is to make sure that once we hear those words that you have cancer, that okay. we can grab a girlfriend or our husband or significant other. And then when we go back for that next appointment, when you sit down with that oncologist and they start rattling all this stuff off to you, you need to have that second person that says, wait a minute, explain that, explain that. Why are we going this route? What are we doing here? Because then you can build the rapport with your doctor, that whole team, that they can't just say anything to you and you'll just take it. The first time you're just gonna take it because hearing those words is gonna knock you back. I've heard those words twice and it knocked me back. So, you, you know, that phrase I should say, but it's really, really important to have somebody to go with you to hear what you don't hear and to get that information. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back again, okay, okay this is what I heard you say. And we have to get in the mindset of advocating for ourselves because you will get brushed over. We know that. But when we make them stop in their tracks and listen to us, and if they're not giving us, if you're not feeling what you getting the answers that you need, get another opinion. Tell the doctor. Tell, I've done this. When a doctor said something to me, I said, it's not that I don't believe what you're saying to me, mm -hmm. but the way you're delivering it to me, and I keep asking you, and you're still not giving me what I need, 
So now we've established that you're not the doctor for me and yes. I need to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then it became, oh, wait a minute. I just thought you were asking. No, when I ask you, I'm asking you because I need to know. I'm not trying to be, you know, anything other but informed about the information that you're giving me. And, um, and that goes to my point, um, Kim, that you were saying that their your first step, whereas like I was saying, a lot of times people think, oh, it doesn't apply to me because it's not in my family. Mm. It doesn't apply to me either because it's not in my family, but yet here I sit. Right. So I, I really want to demystify that, that people think, I mean, obviously there's things genetically that, you know, that we inherit and th that could be one of the things, but I just don't want us to just think, oh, I don't need to do my self, my monthly self checks because my mom didn't have that or my aunt didn't or anybody else. So that's very, very interesting that, that that's the case. I mean, we, we're working with three um, sisters right now. And they all have, one has ovarian cancer, one has breast cancer, and the other one was waiting for her results. And it's, you know, it, 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 so it could be that, or it could be like, in, like you said, then in their family, it skips a generation. So you just can never tell. So being in tune with your body is just crucial. Yeah, and, and thank you so much, Brenda. And also I would just add to that empowering, particularly women of color to, um, you know, advocate uh, on their own behalf. So, Absolutely. you know, I so appreciate that. I really do. Because in this, I'm, I'm going to say in this, this race that we're, we're in, Black women are winning the race. And this is not a race we want to win. So right. <laughs> advocating for ourselves is absolutely vital for our survival. Mm -hmm. It really is. Because we, we are outpacing the charts. Thank you. Was thank there you. anybody else? And thank you, sister, for asking that question. Woman warrior. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Was there anybody else that had a pressing question that they wanted to ask um, Bryn? I call her Bryn because she's a part of the family, too. And she, she's been around for a long time. Look at <laughs> And we, and as you said, praying sisters, we've been praying for each other. Yes. For 30 years. Uh, yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's for sure. Because um, Mike and I will be married 31 years next month. Wow. Right, congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Congratulations. I yes. say 30 well, years because Brent, uh, Brent and I we were both uh, pregnant together with our oldest sons. Quinn yeah. Jr. and Mike. So they're yeah. both 30 this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I remember the day um, when Brent and I was taking the kids when they was in the strollers, one years old, to, um, we were going to San Jose to the flea market. And she kept coughing and coughing and coughing and she couldn't figure out what it was. So she said she was gonna have that doctor's appointment and she went and she called and gave her friend the worst news ever. However, we have yeah. been praying for her ever since then we was preparing for each other prior to that and yeah. because we both married military men <laughs> now <laughs> so yeah. it's just it's a blessing to see you Bryn. i've been following you. you on on facebook girl you know it thank you i appreciate you're it you're welcome i love you love you love you thank you love back to you thanks mama yeah okay. thank you Quite was there any anyone else wanted to share or ask Bren a um a question. I'm trying to find the mask online. I'm not finding it. Oh, so go to impactone.pink and it'll say shop. Oh, impact one. Okay. Yes. So I'm on, your, I'm on the um, type in the website oh, no. well, and it'll say shop somewhere on there and, and you'll be able to click on there and, and master there. So thank you for that. Um I don't wanna I don't see it. No, it's okay. And Bryn, Look in the I did chat. ask you about, thank you, Keisha, for asking, getting that clarification for the information that's needed, because this is what it's about, making sure that everybody gets um, what they need and how we can support and encourage other women. Um, oh, wait, well, I got another question for her. I don't know okay. if she can answer it. So when I, I have my, I go get my mammograms every two years. Um, 
but um, one of my mammograms, I had to go back and forth because they thought, well, I thought it was a lump, but then they was telling me, oh, it was the fatty tissues, but it would go away and then it would come back. So this, two different times I've had the mammograms where it's come back, it's left, a little fatty tissue, whatever left. Then they told me I had dense breasts when said I was more susceptible to breast cancer, even though, you know, that doesn't run in my family. So I guess my question is, should I be concerned because I keep having those things come back, it goes away and come back. And the fact that they told me I have dense breasts and I, I'm not big breasted. So I didn't understand the whole dense breast description. So some, some of, a, a lot of us have dense breasts. And so the technology today is 3D. I would encourage you to, to ask for 3D. It should be standard, but it's not. But um, I would, pay. so let me just tell you for me. What I noticed for me is when I would drink soda, I would find that I had lumps in my breast. Once I backed up off of the soda, then it would go away. And then you also have to remember, you know, start charting that, look at what time of the month is it? Is it when I'm close to my cycle or just finished or am I stressed out, you know? So start paying attention. And that's what I mean when I say start getting in tune with your body. But I would definitely, because you've had that, I mean, again, I'm not a medical professional, but I would encourage you to monitor yourself and ask for 3D imaging when you take your mammogram again and okay. really, really stay on top of that. And don't let, don't, don't, a lot, sometimes doctors will be like, oh, it's just, but keep pushing. And that's what we were talking about earlier, advocating for yourself. Keep pushing and say, I want to see it so that I could know and I know that you saw it. That's okay. how we get the, the results that we want. Because I've seen, I've met women that have had lumps and they just ignored them. Oh, I'll check it out later. And they let them go and then they turned in to be something else. But not every lump means that it's cancerous. Right. You know, so just stay, stay on top of that. Okay. I would encourage Thank you. you. You're welcome. Um, KB Perry, did you, did we get your, because I see your question over here in the chat. Did it get answered? Yes, it did. Thank you. You're welcome. And was there anyone else um, wanting to ask Brynn a question or just share? I know I probably shouldn't say that this is my favorite month, but I, I, I like this month. I mean, got my nails painted pink today. Have my pink, my um, you know, my little thing mm -hmm. on. So I'm gonna be wearing pink all, all month. And every Wednesday, I wear pink in honor of breast cancer awareness. So okay. I would encourage all you women to do that on Wednesdays and have pink Wednesday for breast cancer awareness. All right. So well, they might not be you, on a but it might be somebody that you know or somebody that you love. My right. checks are breast breast cancer awareness. So I'm a very strong supportive of that um, just because I'm a woman and I know that it can happen to me or it can happen to somebody whom I love. So right, right. that's what I'm supporting. And, and I, I thank you so much for doing that because the thing is, October is wonderful and a lot of attention gets put on um, breast cancer awareness and that's good. Like, you know, so many other organizations. Um, but I'll tell you, um, I didn't get diagnosed in October. And then we know a whole bunch of women. Right. It's, it's yearly. It's every day. Right. You know, we need to be reminded of that, um, you know, for, for so all these diseases that, that, that are out there. Um, that is, it's not just dedicated. It's, it's not just that one month. I mean, you know, so thank you for doing that and keeping that awareness. And, you know, one thing I try and talk to when, you know, when we're out in the community doing our events and I'll ask, like if two ladies come up to the table and they'll say, oh, what's all that? And then I'm like, you guys talk about, you know, or go with each other to your, your uh, mammograms or are you doing your monthly self-check? And usually one will say, yeah, I did mine. And the other one's like, no. And she's like, girl, you know, we got to have these conversations because yeah. we bust out in a minute and say, oh, those are some cute shoes or whatever. Right. <laughs> you need to be having that conversation. Hey, girl, did you do your monthly self-check? No, mm -hmm. because that's real. That's real life. So, 
kudos to you for keeping the awareness all year round. Thank you. All year. I agree. I definitely agree. And we have a gentleman on the line. Did you like to say something, sir? How you doing today? I'm all right. I was just going to say, uh, that's my auntie up there. And I just oh. wanted to tell her how proud we are. You know, her encouraging and supporting other women going through the struggle and continue to remain strong because she is one of the, the, the assets to our family. And Aww. we lend her as a sense of strength and support to keep us going too. So despite what she's been going through with her health, you would never know it. You would never know it, man. This is a true, strong sister, soldier, warrior, Zena right. princess, whatever you want to call her. That's that's who she is to us, and that's what we see her as. And so Anime, we love you, girl. We're so proud of you. Man. Keep doing your thing for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> well, we we thank you for um, chiming in because this is, as we said, this is for us, and it should be honoring women, and especially women of color, every the whole year, whole year round. So this is just to bring awareness. This is just to, to say thank you to the woman warriors that's out there. And Miss Kate, B. Perry, you said that you are a dentist and you want to, are you familiar? What did you, did you want to ask another question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Go ahead, say that again. That was for you. Oh, that was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you. I was going to tell you that. I was going to tell you that, and I was waiting to see if she was going to tell you. But one of the things that I really want to say, if you know someone that is going to be going through treatment, dental care is vital. I cannot tell you how many women lose their teeth while they're in treatment. Again, like I said earlier, cancer has so many layers, and there's so many components that you just don't think about but dental care dental care period is crucial to yeah. your overall well-being health it is very crucial but when you're undergoing treatment you need to get in there before in my case i had radiation from here all the way down so radiation burned my saliva gland so that meant I had obviously no saliva in my mouth, but then that also meant that there were foods and things that I could not eat because they're naturally acidic. Things would stick to my teeth. So we didn't have all the tools. I mean, I was my 20s. We didn't know. And we didn't, you know, I was the only sister. I was the only 20 year old. And so I was the only black female. So they, we, you know, they had their little wigs, but it wasn't for me. There was just not the things for me and the knowledge for me. And so the things that I know now being on this journey, if I could have equipped my younger self, fortunately, I didn't lose my teeth. I thought I was going to, but I didn't. But dental care is crucial. And, you know, teeth break off and women have just lost their teeth. And it's just... It's just devastating, period. But when you're losing your hair, you lose your lashes, your brows, you lose your, you know, and then you lose your teeth. It, it, this, this is key. This is so key. Every single day. And, you know, not, and, and being in this um, environment that we're in, too, this is key. So I just want to, again, encourage you to get your teeth taken care of if you haven't and also to keep your mind right because it makes a difference and um, it's just necessary. So Dr. Kim, Dr. Perry, <laughs> so thank you for reading that out. But thanks for busting her out because I was waiting to see if she would say, but I'm glad you read that out. And you know, I believe in divine time, divine order. And this awareness is so crucial that was just confirmation to me is that in our conversations, when one person says something, sometimes it jogs something else. So that's why it's important for us to make sure we share, mm -hmm. you know, that might've been just for me with the divine ancestors and, and Lord said, no, it was for everybody. So thank you for being open to even share that. 
and being able to share that brand as um, as we speak. So the time is winding down, yes. but um, I wanted to ask, was there anybody else had any questions or wanted to share as we uh, do a close? So I would like to thank you all, BH Bring Your Minds Project Inc. Once again, wanted to let you know that this is, will be uploaded to our website, www.bhbrilliantminds.org. And by you being on this Zoom, you will be re you're giving us the authorization for your voice to be heard, for your, your comments, for your picture, and for any social media that we were on that you displayed that it, you given us the authorization to do so. And we definitely, again, want to say thank you. I want Samantha to come back on. And there is a poem, a warrior poem, a woman poem that she just slayed me with when I first met her. And if she can remember it, <laughs> I would like for her to share that with us. And I would like for her to also um, share uh, some, some closing thoughts and words. Go ahead. Everybody say hello to Samantha. Hey, it's Samantha. Hey, it's good. It, I mean, such a rich conversation. Thank you for your vulnerability. Hello, Samantha. Um, Brenda, and just your heart, right? And I think just knowing that whether um, a person has been through it or not, we can all have words to share with someone else. But we also have all have things that we're carrying, so to speak. So having safe spaces where we're able to share those things, let alone get the treatment we need. So I think I definitely see it as a two-step thing. And it takes courage in being able to have these conversations, not knowing the end from the beginning, but trusting that you are amongst family and we're here to hold you and anyone else that is dealing with breast cancer this month or anything else that you're dealing with. So thank you for sharing this evening. Um, I'm not sure if the poem that you remember, do, do you, uh, I'm not sure what poem you're referring to. You were calling on the ancestors to be a part. Oh my God, we did it at Joyce Gordon Gallery. Oh my Lord. It was one of the first pieces I ever heard you do. Mm. Mm. Well, if you can't remember that, close me out with something. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to remember. That's I mean, powerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and then I will do the closing again. There is this poem. I don't know if it's the one you're talking about. Um, it's I'm Sorry. Yes. 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 That's it. That's okay. the one. So that is. That was more of a Black History piece. Well, go ahead. <laughs> if I remember, we said we we celebrating Black History twenty four, uh, 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 three hundred sixty five days a year. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I remember it, I can share the context of the poem in that um, it's basically a poem I wrote when I was eighteen, and um, I'm thirty one now. But the poem talked about. Um, I was given a deck of civil rights cards for um, for Christmas, basically, and I was just like, "What is this? I wanted money. I wanted like sneakers, clothes." Um, but as I began to look through the civil rights cards, there were all of these young people doing amazing things, and I began to become apologetic because I didn't see myself um, doing anything for society, so to speak. I was thinking about who I was going to prom with, like that was the biggest thing on my agenda. I wasn't thinking about like equality and civil rights, et cetera. So the poem was basically an apology to my ancestors, but now thinking about the work that I'm doing now, especially alongside Miss B and just having these, con these real life conversations. And I think that more than anything, um, during these times, people are looking for authenticity and they're looking for something that's real. They're looking for something that they can touch because everything is fake around us. You look at the news, there's just like the same stories over and over. Where can we find elements of hope? Brenda, you are the essence of that, right? Where people can look and say, I know somebody who did it and who survived it and who, who's, who's living and walking that talk. I think that's what people are really looking for. Um, so, well, I mean, let me try to see if I could do a quick search to see if I have the poem. I think it's better for me to read it if that is, um, a possibility. Um, Tell them a little as, bit about the work that you do. 
because she is a young woman warrior with a fighting spirit. This little sister is very sharp. And tell them about what you just got publicized in a in a um, article. Can you share that information, woman, young woman warrior? I, I'm really just humbled to. Yeah, but I need you to share. <laughs> be amongst everyone. Um, let me see. Open. Um, and, um, as I'm looking for this, yeah, they can also go to it and see it on YouTube, but I do want you to share what you just got published. Like, Cause that's very huge. Mm. I mean, I do a lot of, uh, I wouldn't even say community work. When you have to classify things, everything is community work, right? When you're helping another person. Um, and as I'm looking for this, um, my heart is just working alongside real people, uh, really. Um, I think I found it. I think we're in good hands. Okay. And... Um, Let's see. And the reason why I say that because it is important for us to make sure we uplift our young African American young women and um, a, a black and brown young women that's doing the work in the community and around the world. I believe in making sure that us, we, we honor our ours, you know, because they came from us and you. Um, are standing on shoulders on giants on queens that um, have been through. I have a poem, uh, not a poem, but a picture that I'm looking at right in front of me, um, and, it, and it's a sister. It's a she has her arm out, and with her arm being out, is carrying all of the young folks mm. that's on her her actual arm. So that there to me, what we carry every day. Um, is, is something special and we are built for it. We're very uniquely made. We come from strength and women warriors. Yes, 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 yes. Um, there's something that we can all learn from each other, young, old. I think there is, I think the reminder that life is a journey Yes. And um, even thinking about, uh, I'll share this piece in that. Um, and she's being modest and very humble um, about what I asked her to say, because to me, it's a big, big deal. It may, you know, but we, we got to uplift ours. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm unapologetically going to make sure I do that every day of my life because that's what I was supposed to do. That's why I'm here, to make sure that I encourage and empower somebody else, because somebody did it for me. Right. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Uh, like, you just feel the love and the weight of the love and everything, <laughs> right? And I will share. Um, so. That brings to you online. That brings to you. We can hear you, Mel. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh, I think that I'm someone who's, um, uh, pretty active and health conscious, so to speak. So also recently finding out that I have alopecia. So I'm not sure if folks have, are familiar with yeah. that kind of things, but that was for me, was just like, what is this bald spot in my head? And, uh, the doctor was basically like, it's, it's stress induced. It could be stress induced, or it could just be like drinking more water. Right. So I think that it's something as small as that, just making me think, how can I be more conscious, but also be amongst people who are uplifting me up at the same time and making sure that I'm not overworking myself in the process. But um, if folks could just like get settled as we begin to close and just think about all of uh, the many giants and wars, you can close your eyes, you can um, just reflect for a moment, you can reflect on your own self and your own life, or you could just think about the people that have come before us. Um, as I read this piece, and it's really a, a ode to our ancestors thinking about 
um, what they have done, the life that they lived, and how are we living into their legacy each and every yeah. day? So it goes like this. I'm sorry. 50 years too late was her pregnancy. For if she would have menstruated at four and moaned at five, I would have been a part of your legacy. To the pulpit from my people straight from the potty. The back burner on your bosom, but I wasn't alive. I'm sorry. Apologizing to the Kings, the Exes and the Garveys, the Mandelas and the Marleys and the Gandhis. Out of diapers into your cipher, spitting psalms who pacifiers from crawling to lifting choirs. My fertilization served no purpose when I had came, you had retired. So feed me evolutionary infamil, Similac stronger than Benadryl. Put self-confidence on my stroller and not rims, place talent on my feet and not Tim's. Don't tell me stories of Humpty Dumpty, but of Humpty dedicated. Mother Goose who actually flew and in life elevated. Jack and Jill marching not just any hill, but Zion. And for Christmas, forget the toys. Give me back my gold, my steel, my iron, Sierra Leone's diamonds. I want Legos that build mentalities, hula hoops that round up adolescent fatalities, a G.I. Joe, Booker T, W.E., and Frederick Douglass risking their lives on the right track, winning gold and medals and nine nuggets, Harriet Tubman Barbie's reparation for Canarsie, who shed more red than subverted Senator McCarthy, Moet, Mary Jane, and Magnums. We met our monarchy, divorced by our doubts, our dreams we can't marry. 1957, forgetting Little Rock, the stepping stone for only nine. Negroes of omnipotence and excellent, feared more than Colin Bond. We can name every sitcom, but know nothing of a sit-in. Strip poles and not poll taxes, bus boycotts with Edie Nixon. Santa Claus, but not Grandfather Claus, the alphabet with the three Ks. Yes, the Ku Klux Klan, but most importantly, Kunta Kwame, our three kingdom, forever will they reign. Deprived of their linguistics, had not a chance to say never. Where Rosa parked her rear on injustice, maternal earth inspired Mega Evers. For if Linda Brown was Linda White, would segregation be non-existent? Would seeing plus write freely, be an until fiction, hungry for our freedom. They've left Katrina in the kitchen, sliced, cut, battered up, leftovers we are licking. Fake Newtons are no longer Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, Black Panthers gave us no reason to stop shooting for the stars until Emma Till's prayers went up to the sun, forcing us to be about washing our sins and join the march on Washington to know that hope is not yet dead. Reminiscing on Fannie Lou's tombs, reciting Angelo and Giovanni's lines, memorizing Hurston and Hughes, regretful am I for my toddler toes, yearning to stand but couldn't. Thankful for souls igniting the torch, individuals like Carter G. Woodson, too young to relive the past, illuminate my presence in your party. So on my knees, I beg your forgiveness and announce to the world, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Putting it down as a young woman, warrior with a fighting spirit. You know, um, boy, this has been full. I'm very, very full. And I am encouraged to continue to do the work that I've been chosen to do, um, that you've been chosen to do. Women warriors, I honor you today. I celebrate you today. I love you today. I say to you, remember every last individual that has touched your life and that you have touched theirs. I hope that you will continue to walk on your journey to be that inspiration, to be that individual that brings hope into a person's life. You, woman warrior, have been chosen for such a time as this. Please walk in your unique uniqueness as a woman warrior. You are and have been and will always continue to be a woman fighting warrior. And I say good night to you all. Thank you for your time for being here, BH Brilliant Minds are so grateful and thankful that you 
stay for the tap-in session. I would like to thank my sponsor this evening, the Akhenani Foundation, So Love Can Win. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do the tap-in series. And I want to thank my facilitator today, Ms. Brenda Hamilton. We say thank you, woman warrior, and we will allow you to say some parting words if you like, but to every woman that is on this call and every man, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing your presence to be with us tonight because this is what it's all about. In order for us to continue to fight on this journey, we must support one another. And we will do that, especially BH Brilliant Minds Project Inc. We are here for the youth and their families. It is all about us. It is all about you. It's all about me. It's all about our community giving back. Brenda? Well, again, thank you everyone who joined in. I appreciate your time and your listening. Thank you for the opportunity. And no matter what we are challenged with, know that you're equipped. Good night, everybody. Good night and thank you. And she's gonna hold it because we're gonna take a picture. If you don't mind, if everybody would take a picture and let us know when to smile. <laughs> so if you wanna get in the picture, come on through. Um, make sure you're in. I see your uh, DD and I see, what was your, um, I don't wanna butcher the name, M-I-K-A. Woke up this morning with my mind, said